In this video, I want to do a very simple example about solving a system of linear equations using Gaussian elimination and a graphical approach to finding the solution set of a system of linear equations. And in this example, we're going to convert this system of linear equations into row echelon form so that we can use back substitution to solve for the unknown variables x and y. And remember, row echelon form is a very special form that a system of linear equations is written in so that it makes back substitution very easy. In a very general sense, each leading coefficient of each equation in a system of linear equations that is written in row echelon form has a leading one term. So that means the leftmost term of each equation has a one coefficient term. So in the first equation, we have a one times x. In the second equation, we have a one times y. And then the third equation, we have a one times z, right? And every term below these leading one terms have a zero coefficient term. So you can see that the diagonal here consists of all leading one terms. So in order to convert a system of linear equations into row echelon form, we can use elementary row operations to convert one system into an equivalent system. And remember, an equivalent system of linear equations has the same exact solution set as the original system. So let's go ahead and solve this system of linear equations and for each equivalent system that we get, we're actually going to graph the system to see what we find. So to start off, what we want to try to do is we want to try to get leading one terms along this diagonal. And each term below a leading one term should be a zero term. So if I scroll down a little bit to make some room, I'm going to rewrite the equations here. And we can start using elementary row operations to convert this system into row echelon form. So to start off, if we look at the second equation, we notice that each term has a factor of 5, a common factor of 5. So if we took row 2 or equation 2 and we multiplied it by some non-zero constant 1 over 5, we'll get a new row 2. So what I mean by that is if we multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over 5, this constant 1 over 5, we'll get a new equation R2. So 5x times 1 over 5 minus 10y times 1 over 5 is equal to 10 times 1 over 5. Well. 5 and 5 here cancel out, so we're just left with x. And then for this term, we have minus 2y, right? 10 divided by 5 is 2. And on the right-hand side, we have 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So if I scroll down a little bit more, we have a new system of linear equations, an equivalent system, which is 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. And our new equation, r2, is x minus 2y is equal to 2. And just as a disclaimer, I am using the term row to refer to the equation number. So equation 1 would be row 1, and equation 2 would be row 2. For me, it's just easier to say row than equation. And you'll see why we use the row terminology once we get into the subject of matrices. So moving on, this new equivalent system is looking a little bit better. So why don't we actually graph this equation, this system of linear equations, on a software here, our new system of linear equations, remember, was 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. So we can hit enter there. And our second equation, our new equation, was x minus 2y is equal to 2. We can enter that there. So when we graph this and we zoom out, we notice that these two lines are crossing at some point here. And we can actually find what that point is if we zoom in as close as we can. You'll notice that the x is 8, negative 8, and y is negative 5. So that means these two lines are crossing at x equals negative 8 and y equals negative 5. That must mean that x equals negative 8 and y equals negative 5 is a solution set to this equivalent system of linear equations. Whenever we find an equivalent system of linear equations, then that means a solution set is common to all the equivalent system of linear equations 
that we had for that problem as well as the original system of linear equations. So we can verify that by continuing our problem here. And remember, we're trying to get this into rho echelon form. So we want a leading one term here, and we want to try to get rid of this x term to be a zero x term, right? But you'll notice that equation two actually has a leading one term right there. So we can use another one of our elementary row operations. We can switch row one and row two. And when we do that, we get x minus two y is equal to two, and two x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. And all I did here was I took these two equations and I just swapped them, right? Row 1 swapped with row 2. Well, this is a new equivalent system. So since this is an equivalent system, it should have the same solution set as the equation before it, right? So let's go and graph this and check. So our new equation 1 is x minus 2y is equal to 2 right? And our new equation 2 is 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. And if we graph these, well, what do you know? We get the same exact graph. So if I try to find the point where these two lines intersect, again, our solution set is x equals negative 8 and y equals negative 5. So that means that this system of linear equations, this equivalent system of linear equations, has the same solution as the one above it. And that also means that this equivalent system should have the same exact solution set, right? So let's continue trying to put this equivalent system into row echelon form. If there was a way to get rid of this 2x term here to a 0x term, then that would help us make this look more like row echelon form. So we can use another elementary row operation, adding one multiple of one equation to another to get a new equation. So what if I took the second equation and to it, I added negative 2 times the first equation to get a new R2, or an equation 2. What I'm saying is that R2 was 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. And if we multiply equation 1 by negative 2, and we added that equation to R2, we should get a new r2. So negative 2 times r1 is negative 2x plus 4y is equal to negative 4. And if we added these two equations, we'll get 0 here. And then negative 3y plus 4y is simply y. And that's equal to negative 1 plus negative 4, which is negative 5. So if I scroll down a bit more, our new equivalent system of linear equations is x minus 2y is equal to 2, and y is equal to negative 5, right? That came from this. So this right here is actually in row echelon form, right? Each one of our equations has a leading one term on the leftmost side. And for each column, we have a 0 term below each leading one term. So now if we plotted this on our software, we'll get for the first equation, x minus 2y is equal to 2. And our second equation, y is equal to negative 5. Whoops. y is equal to negative 5, right? And if we graph this, well, you'll notice that x equals negative 8 and y equals negative 5. So, so far, Every time we plotted an equivalent system of linear equations, we got the same solution set. x is equal to negative 8, and y is equal to negative 5. So, since this system of linear equations is written in row echelon form, we can use back substitution to solve for x and y. Well, starting at the bottom, we know that y is equal to negative 5, right? y is equal to negative 5. And if we plug this into equation 1, we'll get x minus 2 times y, which is negative 5, is equal to 2. So that means x plus 10 is equal to 2. And if we subtract 10 from both sides, we'll get x is equal to negative 8. And there it is, x equals negative 8, 
y equals negative 5. So the solution set to this system of linear equations is x equals negative 8 and y equals negative 5. So let's actually check this in our original system of linear equations, which was this right here, to see if this solution set satisfies that system. So I'll just rewrite the system here, and we can plug in the values for x and y into each one of these equations to see if they're satisfied. So in equation 1, which I'll do right here, we have 2 times x, which is negative 8, minus 3 times y, which is negative 5, is equal to negative 1. Well, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, right? Minus 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And a negative and a negative make a positive, right? Is equal to negative 1. So negative 16 plus 15 is negative 1, and that equals negative 1. That's true. And how about for equation 2, which is this equation right here? So equation 2, well, 5 times x, which is negative 8, minus 10 times y, which is negative 5, is equal to 10. Well, negative 8 times 5 is negative 40, right? And negative 10 times negative 5 is positive 50, right? And that's equal to 10. Well, negative 40 plus 50 is 10, and that's equal to 10. So that checks out.